In this video, we'll be taking a look at connecting a MIDI keyboard and playing some MIDI sounds here in Aurea Pro. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome back to Studio Live today. This one's going to be fun because I've got the MIDI keyboard out here, the M Audio Key Station 49 Mark III. We've got Aurea Pro ready to go. We're going to be recording in some MIDI instruments and checking out exactly how that works. I've never done it before. This is part of my series. There's two more videos which you can check out in the description where I take a look at Aurea Pro for the very first time and then I delve in and learn a bunch of stuff in the first 24 hours. It's been nearly two days now and now it's time to actually start recording something. So let's dive in here and get cracking. So we are all set up here. Now what I've done is I've brought across some backing tracks here from my song called Imagination. These are ones I created in GarageBand. So these are going to be the basis of what we're going to be recording here today because I've only brought across the bass and the drums and a few synth sounds. I want to actually record in the organ, which you heard me playing around with there at the start. That's this one here. So I've got this already set up here, but I'm going to take a step backwards so that if you are following along at home, you will know exactly what's going on. So I'm not going to go into detail about connecting up your MIDI keyboard. I did that in a recent video about Cubasis. You can check that one out down below, as well as a complete guide to MIDI keyboards. This is my favorite one. You can check out this and all my other recommendations over at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Now you can see at the bottom here, I've already created a MIDI track, but what I'm going to do for completeness is tap on that one and delete it just so that I can show you how we can create this. So here's our backing track at the moment. If we uh, come into a section here, it's all lined up nicely on the grid. It sounds like this. So this is what we're going to record over the top of. I'm going to record some organ and some key sounds here today, and then we're going to add some guitars and some vocals in future videos. So if you're not already subscribed, now would be a good time to do that. Let's add this track. We're going to go to menu and we're going to come down to uh, add track. I can never find it. There it is. <laughs> add track. We want a MIDI track and we want it to be one track. We'll hit OK and there's our one MIDI track. So we'll scroll down and we'll also zoom in a little bit because as I showed in a previous video, the more you zoom, the more of these functions you get. And we'll need some of these for our MIDI playback. Now the first thing we need to do is tap on this little button here. This is going to enable MIDI and this is what I missed when I first started doing this uh, series. I couldn't work out that I needed to do that, but that is now done. And it's defaulted here to our nice stereo grand piano, which sounds really nice if we play that. So very nice sounding piano there, but we don't want a piano in this track. We want an organ. So we can tap here on organ. By the way, we are in uh, the Lyra sampler here. This is the built-in sounds in Aurea Pro. I'm going to use a couple of these, but then I'm going to explore because we can also come all the way down here and add in our audio units and our inter-app audio plugins as well. So we'll play around with a couple of those. But for now, let's just grab our organ sound. We'll tap that one. We want the rock organ. And now... That is the sound that we want to record in for the opening of this track. So that is all there is to it. Now I do have a sustain pedal connected to my MIDI keyboard. So if I hold down on that one, not really what I'm going to need for an organ, but we may need that later if we add in some piano. And we can also over here on my wheel, we can, we can use our pitch bend wheel and our modulation wheel. And that's going to change our sound. The other thing that we can do is we can actually tap on this little E button. This will take us into the visualization of whatever effect, whatever instrument you're using. So here's the Wave Machine Labs, the Lyra, and this is what we have here. So we can start playing around and filtering, changing the envelope, changing a whole bunch of things. And we can even use the keyboard in there. So if you're not, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you can play it in here. Or of course, you can do what we did last time and tap on this one and you can play on that keyboard there as well. But because we have a MIDI keyboard, we're going to be using this one. So let's take ourselves back to the start of the track. We will zoom Zach on. And there we are. We're right at the start of the track. 
let's jump in and queue up this track and get recording. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to zoom or I'm going to pinch these. So I like to be able to see all the other tracks while I'm recording. So I've made sure that I've got that in there. I need to tap on this little record light. That's going to start flashing there. Hit the record button here to arm that one. That's going to start flashing. And as soon as I hit the play button, we're going to be in. So... All right, I need to make sure I can remember how to play this little intro part in this track. So let's hit the record button or the play button now and start our recording here in Aurea Pro. So there was a little glitch at the end there. I'm not sure if that was a problem or what it did. So if we come back to the start of the track here, here is our MIDI track here. It's recorded. We can come in here and take a listen. If we solo it and hit play, it sounds like this. Bring it back into the track. Sounding cool, yeah. And then, of course, we can go into our mixer up here and we can make sure that we mix this sound into the right level. So we hit play again. Let's just make sure we have this around about the right level. Okay, sounding pretty good there. Not too bad. If we come back to uh, our track view, <laughs> that one, then uh, we can also, of course, double tap on this one and go into our piano roll editor. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time playing around with this one. I always do that too. Uh, where's my undo up the top there? Uh, undo, cool. Uh, we'll tap this one off so I'm not going to add notes. So we can come in here and we can inspect all of these different notes. Now, I haven't fully worked these out, but... I'm wondering if the different colors are different uh, velocities or what that means. The harder notes seem to be more of a purple, but I don't know. Uh, so we need to play around and learn how to use this in a little bit more detail. But you can see here, if we just wanted to do some quick editing, let's see if Pete can learn on the fly. We'll come in here and tap on this one. We should be able to just move it. Yeah, we can. So if we think the timing's a bit off, we can move it like that. What about if we want to uh, trim it? Yeah, we've got these same trim handles, so we can just move these around. So the, the key here seems to be to zoom on in and you get a bunch more detail and a bunch more ability to do things here in Aurea Pro. That's what I'm learning as I go. We're going to leave that one for now because I know you want to see some more instruments and you want to see what we can do to layer up this sound. So let's jump in and add another track here in Aurea Pro. So once again, we want to go to menu and to add track and MIDI. We're going to add another new MIDI track that we've got down here. Scroll on down if we can and spread these out so that we can see what's going on. Here we go. Nearly there. <laughs> Still getting used to the interface. Righty dokey. So let's uh, come in here. This time, as we mentioned before, why don't we scroll down and find something else? We've got the Fab Filter 1 in here. I haven't played around with that before. Fab Filter Twin. But let's uh, let's check out some some audio units, shall we? Why don't we bring in the the Audio Kit Retro Piano, which is an audio unit plugin? I've been looking for a reason to play around with this again, so why don't we do that now? So we've added that one there. There it is. It's loaded it in. Start playing. Okay, we, we, we need to set our MIDI section. So it is playing here. It's a 90 stage piano. What we need to do is tap off the MIDI of this track and add it to this track. And now... And you can hear, actually this is going to be a bit weird because there's some crackle in the background because this is the retro piano. So it's supposed to sound like that. So uh, maybe we'll choose something else. Or let's just play around with this for a minute here. Let's go with uh, something like the soul keys. No, that crackling is going to distract me. I, I, it's not quite right for this track. So let's try something else. So we'll come in here. What about the... Uh, <laughs> should we add some saxophone? No, let's go to the Hillman from Clev Grand. Our friends at Clev Grand. Yeah, let's play with the Hillman uh, with these strings. Let's add a bit of a string pad here using this. And you can see that as we add each of these, look, the interfaces aren't perfect because you're bringing those in, but we can resize them to make sure that we can view everything here. So we'll resize that so we can see the, the Hillman in a bit more of its glory. Uh, and now all we need to do, we can slide this just sort of out of the way so we can see what we've got here. But let's come back to the start of the track. 
Uh, move across. There we go. <laughs> the start of the track. And we'll cue this up and we'll record in a bit of a... Let's just make something up as we go along, shall we? So once again, we need to tap on the record light here. We need to hit the record button, then hit the play. And then let's just record in a bit of a pad string sound here for the start of this track. We're going to stop. I don't know what that little glitch was there at the end of that one. <laughs> okay, we'll, uh, we'll X out. Oop, can we X out of that one? Sometimes the, the mousing here doesn't actually work. I have to use my finger. Is that going to close or is it just not closing? It's just not closing at the moment. Maybe we need to stop and unrecord. And can we lose you? <laughs> we can't quite. The human's awesome. It's so awesome it doesn't want to go away. Let me see if we can resolve this and then I'll come on back and see what's happening. All right, I stabbed randomly at the screen until it went away. That's the way to do things, yeah? All right, so now I didn't like this initial part here. So as I learned in the last one, we can do some quick editing here. We can grab this handle, drag it across because we actually only wanted it to start from here and then go into that one. So we'll just bring this in as a bit of an additional instrument. If we bring it here into this one, let's hit play on this. All right, so that's cool. Now that's way too loud right in this mix. So we can come here into our mixer. It is this track here and we can lower that volume down. So if we go back a little bit, little rewind and play again, let's listen. Yeah, cool. Now there may be some settings that I need to play around with in here because I'm starting to hear, you might be hearing it, there's a little bit of audio glitching going on. So for my Aurea Pro experts in the audience, let me know what I might need to do here to uh, to rectify that because uh, yeah, at the end of each of these, we're just getting a little bit of that uh, that glitching. And when I'm playing back, there's a little bit of glitching. Might be something to do with my sampling, sample rate uh, that I need to change around in there, the buffer size perhaps. Uh, we will explore that later because we're starting to get, we're starting to layer it up. And this is the point. We want to start layering up and really putting it to the chest. So let's add in another track here. We're going to go add. We're going to add track. And this time, again, MIDI. But this time, let's uh, let's pick something that's an audio, a, a extension, not an audio unit extension, an interapp audio. That's what I'm trying to say. Losing my words today, but that's okay. Uh, that rhymes. So we can come in here. This time, we're going to select this one. We're going to scroll down. And this time we can come down here and find something to bring in from our, uh, yeah, from our audio, uh, interrupt audio. So should we bring in the audio kit D1? Let's try this one here. We will tap on that and this should load up our audio kit D1. There you go. It loads it in the background because remember interrupt audio means it's going to play the app and... We're getting audio through. See, I haven't used this for ages, so now I'll need to quickly work out how to actually enable the the D1, or maybe we'll go to a different instrument. You know what? It may be this button here again, right? So we'll uh, we'll turn that one on. We'll then go back to oh, the wrong one. We'll press the wrong button. We'll go back to the effect like that. Hasn't quite worked yet, has it? Can you tell I'm very much a GarageBand user? A lot of this next level stuff, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I struggle with, which I'm happy to admit. And I'm leaving all this in here because I'm going to, I'm going to delete it and start again uh, because I clearly need to learn more about InterApp Audio before I jump back in. I've been using so many audio unit uh, AUV3 plugins that, uh, yeah, it's been a while. So anyway, let's add in this to another instrument here. We'll go add track. We just want some keys. So I'm actually going to go to Clevgran, not Clevgran, to Ravenscroft, my favorite piano app. So we're going to add another one here. This time, we're going to scroll in here and we will use it as an in, uh, as an audio unit. Where are we? There is my... Oh, it's there. UVI Ravenscroft. Okay, we'll tap on that one. It's going to load up the Ravenscroft. And now, again, we need to enable the MIDI. And now, there is that beautiful Ravenscroft 275. 
sound. Sorry, I'm going to get super distracted just playing that. But let's uh, let's get to a preset here. The classic is nice, but we need something a little bit sort of crunchier here. What about like an old jazz? Yeah, let's go with the old jazz piano for the preset here on the Ravenscroft. So we'll bring that over to the side and come to the start of our track. I've done something with this at the top here. That's okay. Out of the way. I hope you're enjoying watching Pete stumble around here. I, I, again, the reason I'm doing these in this way is that I want you to feel like you're sort of doing it along with me and learning as we go. And it's an excuse for me to learn it, uh, but it also will hopefully feel, make you feel better when you come to learn things. And things are a bit fiddly, but you know what? You push through and that's the way you learn and the way things go. So uh, we are at the front of the track. We can arm the record. See, I'm getting good at this now-ish. And we can hit the record button and let's just work out... That's that's the uh, that's the sound we're going with. So let's hit the play button to start the recording. We'll hit stop on that one, and that is done. So we should be able to send away. There we go. It's gone away this time. <laughs> we'll send away our instrument there. Let's bring these three together. We'll turn off our little record light. Let's just take a listen to these three tracks that we've just recorded to see what they're going to sound like together here in the mix. So we'll come back here without, not with that one. <laughs> we'll come back here. We'll turn off the record. So that's not, oh no, that's the solo. Turn off the record, and let's play this back now, shall we? I've got the record setting, no play takes an hour. At least it let me know that. So let's turn the record light off. No? How do we stop it from recording? Stop. Okay, we're good. Let's play. Okay, sounding good. Again, we've got that crackling going on there. So that's definitely some sort of buffer size situation that I'm going to need to look into in the future, probably before we come back and do another video. But I did just want to show you this one, that recording our MIDI sounds is pretty simple there. Uh, we can add in any of these instruments, use interapp audio, apparently, although I did, couldn't get it to work because like, I'm very simple. Um, and then we could record in these other instruments as well. Uh, the MIDI keyboard just makes things so much easier to do things like this here in Aurea Pro or in any other digital audio workstation. I feel I've got a little bit more to do here, so please join me in the rest of the series. Hope you're enjoying it. You can check out the other videos down in the description. i got to get practicing and get familiar with Aurea Pro before the next video, which we'll be back with tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.